Hello all, in this video we are going to look at another interesting memory element called FIFOs. So FIFOs you might have heard, this is a special kind of memory uh, which is actually a first in, first out kind of memory. That means whatever data is stored in the memory first, it will be the first one to come out when you read from the memory. Okay. So FIFOs are mostly used as buffers. So suppose you have data coming from somewhere at some particular rate and you are processing that data. Okay. So suppose you cannot keep up with the rate at which data is coming, uh, we will have to put a buffer in between and you store the data initially in the buffer, then you take it from the buffer and process it. Same way your processed output can be stored in another buffer and from there data can be sent out. So here you can see the rate uh, might not be matching the incoming rate and the processing rate and the outgoing rate might not be matching. In that case, uh, FIFOs are quite helpful. Again, a lot of other applications are there. Uh, for example, you have data coming from uh, some other external source and you want to find the largest number in that array, right? finding the maximum value. So unless you get all the data, you cannot find the largest number. So in that case, first you will have to store that data somewhere. Of course, you can store the data in a RAM and process it, but using FIFOs uh, will be much helpful to you uh, because you will not have to manipulate the read and write address. Okay, so first let's look at the abstract view of a FIFO. So from external world, uh, this is what we are going to see. Uh, we'll have a clock because this is also a synchronous circuit. Uh, we'll have other kind of FIFOs called asynchronous FIFOs also that we will discuss later. So we will have a single clock here. And this FIFO, it will have a reset, active high or low, uh, depending upon that. Then you will have a write enabled signal like our RAM. So if you want to store something to the FIFO, you should make the signal high. Then you will have a write data signal, which will get stored in the FIFO. You will have one output flag signal called full, which basically says the FIFO is full. Uh, you can no longer write to the FIFO. So if the FIFO is full, and if you try to write, uh, that data won't get stored in the FIFO. Basically, that's the thing. So this is the write part. Read part, here you will have a read enable signal, which basically means you want to read from the FIFO. Then you will have a read uh, data, which will be going out. You will also have a signal, again a flag signal called empty, which will basically say there is no uh, data in the FIFO. So if you read from an empty FIFO, what will come out of the FIFO is undefined. So you are basically not supposed to read from an empty FIFO. Anyway, these are the mandatory signal. In addition to that, you can have other signals like uh, you can have occupation count, which basically says like how many data are uh, currently stored in the FIFO. So this is the abstract view. Now, if you look at the design of a FIFO, uh, it is nothing but a wrapper on top of your RAM. So we have already seen, uh, we have uh, RAM, something like this, array of memory elements. And we will have this uh, write enable, uh, write data and write address signals already going here. Now, to build a FIFO, you basically will have to manipulate these signals uh, and uh, you will have to get these other abstract signals. Okay, so. Uh, as I mentioned, if you want to write to a FIFO, so we'll have the clock signal. You'll basically say, I want to write, so you'll make the write signal high. If you want to write a single data, you'll keep it only for one clock. Otherwise, you can keep it high uh, as long as you want until it becomes full. So you'll make it high and you will write the data, right? So this should get stored inside the memory. So how can we do it? So you know, like for storing, uh, anything in the RAM, this write enable should be high for the RAM. So this write enable, maybe we can directly assign to this write enable. And this write data can be again assigned to this write data, no issues. Only thing that is missing here is this write address. So this write address, we will have to manipulate internally. So basically what should happen, each time you write a new data, 
you should internally increment this right address. We may start from uh, zero address. It is not necessary you should always start from zero address. You can start from any address. But again, uh, let's say our right address, it starts from zero address. Now, once you write one data that will get stored here, you simply increment this right address to the next uh, value so that when you write next time to the FIFO, it will get stored in the next location, so on and so forth. So this right address we will manipulate internally. Now this write table uh, will not directly connect. Uh, as I mentioned, if the FIFO is full, if you have written in all memory location, unless you read from the FIFO, you can no longer store any data. Okay, so this write enable will be a combination of uh, this FIFO write enable as well as this full signal. So we will see how to do it. Same way read enable, we have read address here. And if you want to read from the FIFO, you will be making this signal high. So what should happen? So once you read from a location, you will have to increment this read address to next location so that when you read from FIFO next time, you will be reading the next data, so on and so forth. Again, you cannot blindly keep on incrementing the address because this empty will have an effect there. If the FIFO is already empty, that means you should not increment this read address. Okay, so that's the logic. So let's go ahead and write the code, then things might be clearer. As usual, we'll start a new look file. So module 5.4 will have input clock, we have input reset, why we really need a reset here, we will see soon. Uh, we will also have 5.4 right enable, we will also have 5.4 write data. Now width of the data, uh, again we will make it configurable like we did last time. So let me declare now itself, hash parameter 5.4 underscore width, let's make it 8 this time, 1 byte. So here it will be width minus 1, 5, 4, right data. We will have an output of 5, 4, 4. Now read side, we will have input 5, 4, read enable. And we will have output. Five four read data. We'll also have output okay, five four empty. We can also give the occupation count five four. Let's call data count, which basically means how many data are there in the five four. So how many data are there in the five four? Again, depends upon the depth of the five four. Maximum how much data you can store in the five four. That also let's declare five four that equal to let's keep it small 54 8 so the depth counter it's a counter again equation remains same we'll have dollar c log 2 of 54 depth colon 0 okay so i didn't write 54 depth minus 1 this time why because if you see, uh, I have to give the exact number of data count. I am not going to give some address value. So the data count starts from one. So if I say my FIFO depth is eight, uh, I can store eight data in the FIFO. Okay. So if FIFO is full, the data count should show eight, not seven. Now to store eight, you need four bits because it is one zero zero zero. Okay. So using three bits, you can represent eight numbers, zero to seven, but my requirement is I need to show the exact data count. So I will need one more bit to do it. So here the equation is slightly different. It is directly uh, log of five four depth, which will be three here. So three down to zero, four bits, so that I can have eight as my output. Okay, so that's the abstract view. Now, as I mentioned, FIFO is going to be a wrapper on top of our RAM. So let's look at the code for our RAM. So this was our RAM. Uh, let me do one thing. Let me type this RAM and directly instantiate it inside our FIFO so that this acts like a wrapper for our RAM. So remember the instantiation template. 
uh, we need the module name followed by the parameter mapping so this is the advantage of parameterization since my FIFO width and depth are 8 I need to give the same width and depth to my RAM also okay so width I can directly make FIFO width here depth I can directly make it as uh, FIFO depth here now the clock signal we can directly connect with this clock signal right enable uh, we cannot directly connect this right enable because as I mentioned we will write to this memory only when the FIFO is not full so we need to manipulate it write address anyway we need to generate it it's not coming from outside uh, write data okay we can directly connect because unless there is write enable this write data is not going to get stored anywhere so it is perfectly fine to directly connect it uh, and manipulate this control signal read address we have to generate and read data uh, it is fine we can directly connect it to the output uh, read data okay so since this is output this should be wire type so you can keep it as such okay so that part we have done now let's see how to generate this uh, write enable okay so you can write it as a combination circuit or a sequential circuit but for better performance we may write it as a sequential circuit so i will say like always at for such clock if 54 write enable is high and there is no 54 full okay 54 is not full if these two are satisfied then only I will make this write enable high. So let's call it like write enable internal, something like that. I will make it one tick P1. Otherwise, we will make this internal signal as zero. Now, when you start your circuit, initially this should be made zero. That's why we have reset here. So let's bring the reset also. And we'll say like, uh, if reset is there, uh, right table internal will be made zero. And else, these things. So you can write it as else and if else under this else or you can write if else if else like this also since it is inside always block uh, we have to declare it as a register of course okay so this looks perfectly fine but this has a major issue why because now you are delaying this 54 write enable by one clock cycle to generate this write enable internal see so if you have write enable high only on the next clock cycle this write enable internal will become high but if you look at your 54 write data we have directly connected it here so there is one clock delay between this uh, write enable internal and this 54 write data so if i directly connect it here uh, there will be mismatch between this signal and 54 write data so how can you avoid it uh, since this signal is one clock delayed, this 54 write data should be also one clock delayed. That is one way. Or instead of writing it as a sequential circuit, you should make it as a combination circuit. So in combination circuit, we'll just say like assign uh, write internal equal to 54 write enable and uh, not 54 full. Okay. only if this condition happens this is high otherwise it is low but for better designs it is always uh, good to go for internal pipeline so what we'll do i'm uh, now changing my design i will take this signal and i will add one clock latency here one clock pipelining again why we need pipelining you will see in the theory what are the advantages of pipelining so i will take this signal and delay it by one clock so i simply assign 
this signal to another signal let's call it or a 5 or right data p to indicate it is one clock delayed data or pipeline data so we need to declare it its width should be also same as 5 width okay so i'll make it like this and i will connect this one here now that looks fine but this logic is not completed uh, we haven't generated this 5 for full signal yet so let's try to create this signal how this signal can be generated so as i mentioned before we will say 5 for is full uh, provided there is no more space in the 5 for to write data and we will say our 5 for is empty uh, when there is no more data in the 5 for so we need some kind of counter which can count how many data there in the 5 for so we need a data let's say counter what should be the width of the data counter again he is going to count from 0 to 8 because this 5 for can store up to 8 so its width should be c log to 5 for depth down to 0 like this and let's write this counter logic okay so this is our 5 for right logic this we are pipeline for aligning with 5 for Okay, okay, RAM right in it. This data counter, let's write now. So we'll say, like, again, always at postage clock. Okay, we are using synchronous reset. Again, we are encouraged to use synchronous reset rather than asynchronous reset uh, practically. So if there is a reset signal at the beginning, what we'll do, we will make this data counter as zero. Okay. Else if, what are the different cases? So there can be a case where we are reading and writing from the 5 on the same clock. If that is the case, there is no difference in the data counter because you wrote a new data and you read an old data. So the data count uh, essentially remains same. And the case is you only writing to the 5 -4. In that case, data counter should increment. Another case is you are only reading from the 5 -4. In that case, data counter should decrement. Okay, so let's write the first case. You are writing as well as reading from the 5 -4. Now, when am I writing to the 5 -4? Simply looking at 5 -4 write enable is not enough to say like I am writing to a 5 -4. This signal should be high and 5 -4 should not be full okay so we need to generate that signal separately so i will say like assign valid 5 write is 5 write enable and 5 is not full okay so it is essentially same as this one right so this actually i can replace with this one that it looks concise so this is valid uh, 5 4 right same way you can say uh, valid 5 4 read happens when 5 4 read enable is high and 5 4 is not empty this should be combination circuit if you make it sequential circuit okay you can look at waveform what is going to happen uh, the external world he will see 5 is empty or 5 is full only after one clock delay and within that clock cycle he might have sent a new data or he might have tried to read a new data so that will uh, create issues okay so as soon as 5 becomes empty uh, he should be able to see it so this should be a combination circuit so here we will write the first case uh, if valid write is there and there is no read operation okay on this clock write operation happened but there is no read operation in that case we make data counter data counter plus one to be one so we need else if here else if okay else if valid read and there is no write operation in that case we will decrement the data count and 
and I am not going to write any other case. That means in all other case, uh, cases, data counter remains as before. For example, both write and read happens together, and there is no write and there is no read. In that case also, data counter remains the same. Okay, so it is enough to mention what are the cases under which it should change in a sequential always flow. If it is a combinational, you have to mention all the cases uh, as we discuss. Otherwise, there will be latches. So we already have a signal like FIFO data count to the external world, and we can simply assign uh, it same as our data count. Because essentially they are same. Okay. Now let's try to generate the full and empty signal. So assign when we say FIFO is full. When our data counter becomes same as FIFO depth, if that is the case, FIFO is full. Otherwise, FIFO is not full. Same way, empty. When can we say it is empty? When our data counter is zero. If data counter equal to equal to zero. We will say like it is empty, otherwise it is not empty. Now, you don't have to use this conditional operation. If you write only this much, it is the same effect. Okay, uh, This only means this is true only when this is true, otherwise it is false. So it is same as writing like this. Okay. But let's write like that for clarity. Let's quickly save our code 54.v. So uh, many logic we have written. Now the main thing that is missing is the manipulation of this write address and the read address or cap. So how can we manipulate them? Okay. Okay. So we need some registers to store to which address we want to write when a new data comes. Okay, so let's go ahead and declare them. So reg and what should be the size of this register? Uh, their value should change from zero all the way up to depth minus one. So if it is eight, we can go only from zero to seven. So this much is enough. And let me call it write pointer. Uh, this is the register which will point or store the address where I want to write next. Same way we will have a read pointer, which basically says from where I want to read. Now, at the beginning, when you apply reset, these pointers can start from zero. So you can say if there is a reset, write pointer is zero. Else if, else if we will increment the write pointer whenever a valid data gets written into the FIFO. Okay, so let's look at the waveform once again. So suppose we have the clock signal like this. And from external world, we wanted to write something. So we made write enable high on this clock. And this is our FIFO write enable. And we have the FIFO write data will be placed along with this. What is before and after, we don't care. Now we had some internal logic, which is checking this right table and the full signal. So let's assume full is low. So we had a signal valid right, right? Valid 54 right. So what will happen to that signal? Valid. 54 right that will become high here because that is when this signal is high and this signal is low and it's a combinational circuit so this is where it will become high then we have this right enable internal which is the actual signal going to the RAM which is sequential so it will come here and it will become high on this clock and it will remain high for one clock. This is right 
enable internal we also pipelined our data so this is our okay 54 right data p data p the pipeline one now remember this right enable and data they are going to our internal ram so we should also provide the address where to write this so assume uh, at the beginning we are at address zero so we are providing address zero here so what happens on this clock edge this data will get written into address zero so the next data should get written into address one so once we give address zero we should increment it to one so that if i have new data written on the next clock we have new data here same way if we follow that new data will come here in the pipeline and it will get written uh, into the address one okay so what we should see we should check if there is write enable internal high if it is high we will simply increment the right point so this is our right point we don't have to check for full and all in this case because right enable internal he has already taken care like this is a valid right this is a real right fifo is not full so if right enable internal is high we can simply increment our right pointer if right enable internal is high on this clock edge no right enable int is high on this clock edge remember that okay only after this clock edge uh he's becoming low so on the clock edge he is one on this clock edge he is low so let's go ahead and write that one so at reset he is low else if right enable internal if this signal is high we will increment the right pointer by one right pointer is right pointer plus one tick b1 in all other cases we will retain the previous value uh, now the question our depth is only 8 we start from 0 so what happens uh, once we reach 7 so once we reach 7 we are doing uh, right point reach right point of plus 1 it will be 7 plus 1 8 but remember our width is only 3 bits here because of uh, c log depth minus 1 so he won't be able to store 8 Uh, there will be overflow so he will store only the lower three bits so when we have eight the lower three bits are zero 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 so he will automatically overflow to zero that's why you don't have to write that logic here to check whether he reached the maximum value if the depth is not a power of two uh, you will have to do that checking and you will have to reset to zero instead of blindly incrementing okay the same way we will have to manipulate read pointer also so at reset read pointer is also zero and when we do a valid read operation from the 54 we should increment the read pointer now whether we need to put additional pipeline to that output data and uh, let's look at the code for the ram here you can see we already have a pipeline here so there is already one clock latency between placing the read enable and getting the actual data so you don't have to add any additional pipelining here so you can directly connect the output from the ram to the external world okay so we do not have read enable internal here in 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 this case so we can directly use valid 54 read for manipulating our read pointer okay so if this is one we will increment it so in case of 54 also uh, because of one clock latency of our ram uh, it will also have one clock latency you place 54 read enable suppose on, on this clock you want to read okay so you will place uh, read enable here from external world 54 read enable so this is a 54 read enable and assuming it is not empty valid 54 read enable will also become high on the same clock because it because it's a combinational circuit so we'll have some address in the read pointer register 
and the data in that address will be coming out of our RAM on this clock. Okay, so this is read data. Since this is directly connected to external world, this data will be directly going out of the FIFO. So this FIFO also has uh, one clock latency. If you don't want latency in FIFO, means as soon as you place the read signal, uh, you want to get the data, you will have to remove the pipeline from our RAM. But that is not a good design practice. Okay, uh, good design practice is to put a pipeline here and uh, design your uh, remainder of the circuit uh, by keeping this in mind that there is one clock latency. So now we can directly connect this write pointer to this write address and read pointer to this read address. And that's it. So that will complete the design of our FIFO. The design might look much simpler if we directly uh, model this memory array in this code itself, but I wanted to show that FIFO is nothing but a wrapper on top of our RAM. Now we have to simulate and see uh, whether everything is right or wrong. First, let's try to compile it. Yeah, so here I forgot to put zeros. Okay. And line 14. Yeah, we need to give upper and lower bounds. Okay. Okay, so magically there are no more syntax arrays, but let's see whether there are semantic arrays. Okay, one dangerous error is here. Uh, this should be 54 depth, not 54 width. So typo, but it will have a serious effect. Okay, it should be depth. Okay, so let's recompile and we see work dot 54. Okay, there's a load time error missing instance name. Okay, when I instantiated RAM, okay, I gave module name. After parameter mapping, we are supposed to give the instance name also. Forgot to give it. So this is not a compilation error. Only during runtime, he tries to load this module, then he finds that it doesn't have a instance name. Okay, so you can give it a name. Recompile. We see work dot five four. Okay, so if your RAM is not pre-compiled, it should be pre-compiled. Okay, uh, otherwise again you will get an error during loading. So your RAM should have been already uh, compiled. Mine is already compiled. Okay, so everything is loaded. So you can see the hierarchy. Uh, we have five four at the top which is instantiating the RAM below that and our memory is also here that memory hierarchy you can see it is the mem inside RAM which is inside FIFO so every hierarchy will be showing uh, using the instance name except for the top module where you will have the module name so let's add all the signals so let's add all signals from FIFO first and okay don't need the hierarchy here we will add a new divider and see the signals going to the RAM also. So divider, okay, RAM, and we'll take signals from RAM and say add with, okay. We have everything, so let's apply some clock. Okay, 10 nanosecond. Initially, we'll assert the reset and keep all other control signals slow. So FIFO write enable low, FIFO write data, let's keep it low, FIFO full is output, we don't drive it, read enable low, read data is output, empty is output, data count is also output. Okay, so this is enough, let's run for a few blocks. Okay, and let's remove the reset. And let's look at the condition of the signals when the system starts. So you can see FIFO full is low. That is true. At the beginning, there is no data in the FIFO. That means it is not full. But FIFO empty is asserted. 
which is correct it is asserted because this data count is zero right so data count is zero there is no data okay and read pointer write pointer both are zero at the beginning okay now let's try to write some data so we'll make FIFO write enable high and we are going to do back to back writing we will write may maybe five data to the FIFO so write enable I made high uh, first data let me write one okay so on this clock I should, might have got written now I am changing the data to two okay two then let's try three now let's try it four tick d4 and let's try it five also tick d5 okay I, I wanted to write only five data i wrote five data continuously and after that i'll make write enable low and that's it so let's see what just happened a few things we can notice before data count now it is 5 showing like there are 5 data inside the FIFO which is true and the right pointer you can see after each write operation it is incrementing so initial address was 0 then it became 1 2 3 4 5 so this 5 basically means next data will be written to address 5 and our valid FIFO write you can see it is aligned with the FIFO write enable that's how we designed it but write enable internal you can see it is one clock delayed okay so it is one clock delayed uh, same way FIFO write data P you can again see that is one clock delayed compared to our input data still one two three four five but it is uh, one clock delayed and it is aligned with this uh, write enable internet so everything looks fine another interesting thing is about the empty signal so you can see as soon as i wrote the first data so i placed the first data here and i made the write enable high here on the next clock it might have got written so at the same clock FIFO empty got deasserted, saying like FIFO is no longer empty. Now if you look at the RAM, okay, you can see write enable is coming here. These are the right address 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Next data will be written to 5, and whatever data we wrote, uh, that is also coming here. And if I go to this memory list and if I check the content you can see that it's one two three four five so that goes to remaining three location uh, we don't know now let's write uh, three more data and let's see whether FIFO will become full or not so valid FIFO write enable let me make high again okay FIFO write data so let's make it uh, six d6 then let's write 7 d7 okay and let's write 8 also tick d8 okay now this 8 it is supposed to get written on this clock edge and that should make the five four foot see only one more location is there suppose i write one more data now so i am going to write nine also tick d nine okay so let's see what actually happened we need to look at the full signal okay so here is the five four foot so the clock edge where eight got written on the same clock edge this full signal when high saying like the FIFO is full so whatever data is placed after FIFO is full won't be get returned so my 9 will not get stored in the FIFO so you can see this is 1 to 8 and this 9 he didn't write so it, it doesn't matter 
how long I keep Nyan and make write enable high, he will simply ignore it. That's how we wrote our code. Because once the full is there, our write enable to the RAM will be becoming low. Now the only way to write to FIFO is to read some data from the FIFO and create some uh, vacancy there. Okay, so let's make write enable low for the time being and try read enable. So remember our 9 is not written actually. So FIFO read enable, if I make it high, let's see. So I made it high on this clock. So there is one clock latency. So what our data is coming out of this clock edge corresponds to my first read. Okay. So we need to look at FIFO read data. Uh, that is already one for a long time because at the beginning the default address is zero. So whatever was in address zero, he already kept on the bus. So the first data corresponding to first read is one. Okay, so let's keep it asserted and run for some time. And let's see if we for read data. Inside. Okay, so we made it high here. This is the first data one, then two, then three, then four. Okay, so first in, first term. The same order we wrote. We are getting in the same order. Now look at our full signal. What happened to it? Here is the full. As soon as the first data came out, full got deasserted, saying like now it's no longer full, he has some space. So let's keep on reading. And when we read the last data, the FIFO empty signal, it got asserted with the last data. Okay, so empty will be coming along with the last data. And if we keep asserting FIFO read enable, the output will be stuck at one. Uh, but this is not a valid data. This we are trying to read from an empty FIFO. Okay, so the last data which comes along with empty is valid, but any data after that is invalid if the empty signal is asserted. Okay, so basically this is the operation of the FIFO. Uh, you can have a look at all other signals also in detail. Uh, to clearly understand how how everything is working thank you